Greetings, everyone. Today, I would like to educate you all on my favorite Vietnamese animation of all time, Juan's Piss. Juan's Piss is a story about Vikings sailing around the seven seas in search of a legendary treasure known as the Singular Item. The plot revolves around our titular protagonist, Mr. Fantastic, a young boy with the power of wristbands who wishes to become the one and only Prince of All Swashbucklers, a title given to whoever finds the singular item. However, he can't do it all by himself, which is why he assembles a crew of 9 slash 10 slash 5,640 other people. His first mate is a green-haired sword wielder named Ichigo Korosaki, who strives to become the greatest knife thrower in the world. Next, there is the young girl named Nylon, the typical tsundere slash mammary gland flaunting female companion, whose sole purpose in the show is to break the laws of basic human anatomy. Then we have the lovable Muhammad, the first semi-black character in anime not to be portrayed like this. He's supposed to be the funny man of the group, but the only thing truly funny about him is the fact that his nose is longer than the penis of every fan of the show. After that, there's the head chef Slim Jim, who was born with a terrible case of chronic erection for thoughts. He's also the only cast member to have an official redesign that actually improved his appearance. Next, we've got Randolph the Blue-Nosed Hedgehog, a medical practitioner who relies on steroids and performance-enhancing drugs to allow him to brutally murder people. Then there's the lovely Robble Robble, who is the most relatable member of the crew, seeing as she has repeatedly expressed a strong desire to die. Up next is Robocop, a cyborg that runs on Coca-Cola, which is actually just code for cocaine. And lastly, there's Brack, who we will not discuss. Well, now that you know the whole crew, let's see what just kind of antics they get themselves into. A typical adventure for Mr. Fantastic consists of landing on an island, doing mostly nothing while several tragedies and depressing flashbacks happen, and then finally assaulting the antagonist with a few punches and saving the day. However, after repeating this cycle several times, Mr. Fantastic ends up being wanted by the Sailor Army for 30 million pesos. But instead of fearing for his life, our hero ignores this and presses onward into the greatest ocean in the world, the Gulf of Mexico. Here he eventually reaches the islands of Saudi Arabia, where he helps the Princess Vivo save her Islamic terrorist citizens from one of the several landlords, Sir Crockpot. Later, Mr. Fantastic and his crew decide that the ocean is for normies, which causes them to decide to make their way up into Asgard, where they encounter the rap god, Eminem. But thankfully, Mr. Fantastic summons the power of atheism and punches god Eminem all the way up to the moon, where he meets moon people! After all those adventures, Mr. Fantastic's ship becomes badly damaged, so the crew takes it all the way to the city of Not Venice, and find out that it's far beyond repair. Then Muhammad decides to leave the crew because he and the ship were in a serious sexual relationship, which makes everyone fall into despair. Oh, and then Robble leaves too because the CIA shows up, but it's okay, because the crew finds out it was all part of Robble's plan to save their lives. So everyone rushes to Washington, D.C. and rescue Robble by viciously beating up a group of furries. With all that done, Robocop builds them a brand new ship and the crew sails off to Spooky Island and encounter Geico Mario and his army of Tumblr users. Thankfully, Brack shows up and does nothing while Mr. Fantastic throws a punch and wins again, proving that diversity is for hacks. So now the crew takes a short stop at Big Bubba Bubble Island and unfortunately is attacked by a Thundercat and separated all across the globe. Mr. Fantastic winds up at a brothel where he attracts the attention of another one of the several landlords named Fatbait. However, Mr. Fantastic learns the terrible news that his brother Oni-san has been arrested and is going to be given a slap on the wrist. He then ventures to Guantanamo Bay where he infiltrates maximum security, only to find that Oni-san has already been taken to the Sailor Army Clubhouse. Thankfully, Mr. Fantastic enlists the help of a band of transgenders to break out of the prison and travel to Microsoft HQ, where a giant war breaks out between all of the Sailor Army and the mighty White Man. Unfortunately, Mr. Fantastic fails to save Onisan and is forced to watch him die from a terrible case of heartburn. 
then, white man is killed by the evil black man. But thankfully, everything comes to an end when Ginger the Great arrives. With the war over, two years go by while Mr. Fantastic trains with the powerful Rowley Jefferson until finally he reunites with his fellow Merry Men. Together, once again, they sail deep below the sea to Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom, where they rescue Princess Ariel from the gender-bent Ursula, who wears very fashionable shorts. Following that, the crew sails all the way to Nazi Germany, where they discover that Hitler has begun secret plans to gas every Jewish Viking in the world. But luckily, our usual hero, Mr. Fantastic, enlists the help of Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin to save the European front from Hitler's terrible attack. But then, the Allied powers learn that Hitler was secretly being controlled by Baron Trump, who also became a flamboyant homosexual at one point. With this, Mr. Fantastic and Stalin declare war on Baron Trump and attack him in his homeland of Jerusalem, which would explain his ties to Hitler. And along the way, Mr. Fantastic saves yet another princess, who I should mention is canonically 16 years old, so no naughty thoughts, little boys. After Mr. Fantastic transforms into a black guy and delivers some BBC into Baron Trump's face, he and his compadres leave to explore Bestiality Island, where they meet hundreds of disgusting human-animal hybrids. Instead of bombing this land of abominations, they agree to ally with them to seek out and destroy the oppressive dictator Biggie Smalls, Mom. However, their plan they create with the help of the Godfather fails, resulting in a terrible confrontation between Mr. Fantastic and Charmin Cataract. In an entirely unexpected and original twist, Mr. Fantastic punches Cataract and defeats him, and then safely escapes with his friends. I love how different every arc in this show turns out, there's no telling how anything will ever go. And now, our heroes venture towards the mysterious land of Wakanda, and there's no telling what deadly perils await them. So, now that you've been told the whole story of Juan's piss, one certain fact remains undeniably certain. I am a pathetic weeb who deserves excruciating death. Somebody, please help me. I don't know how longer I can go on like this. Somebody come save me!